According to the last demographic and health survey, Uganda registered three dead mothers per 1,000 births. In response, government and donors have thrown a lot of money in solving this problem. But it is not until one spends time on the ground that they will appreciate the missing linkages in solving the problem. Mayuge Health Center 4, which lies by the roadside towards town, visibly stands out with a towering signboard that welcomes both patients and strangers. <laughs> it is easy to access, and the recently added dull orange fresh coat of paint radiates in the afternoon sun like a sodium lamp. But like they say, looks can be deceiving. For many residents, contact with the facility one of the two health center falls in the district is an avoidable routine. To a first-time visitor and who is not accustomed to the country's public health system, the experience can be distressing. Health workers here carry on their duties without the slightest sense of urgency. Sam, backing orders, are the noticeably anxious patients. This is peppered with long queues and congested patient rooms in the morning and as the day wears on in the afternoon, hardly any staff can be found around the premises. There is not enough space for beds donated to the facility, so they rust away in the compound. Disposed medical waste litters, the precincts of the hospital. But there is more misery as officials we spoke to admitted the deplorable state of healthcare in Mayuga district. This area is also grappling with high levels of teenage pregnancies and malnutrition. For Saufa Namulondo, the facts that constitute the painful experience of losing her newborn son at the health center for suggest they could make the ingredients of criminal negligence. The main problem we have is our health workers. If you don't have money, they are never helpful at all. When I was admitted to give birth, even when they saw that I was in pain, all they kept asking about was money. I almost gave birth at the veranda. Even after giving birth, they were still not helpful. Namlondo says the medical personnel here have no regard for ethics and service. That was it for me. The baby died and I could as well have died. Just like that, I buried my boy. The point is, if you don't have some money to part with, you likely won't get any help. Patients and their relatives have to pay to access treatment here. The starting range for medicine is 10,000 shillings. The medicine to stop bleeding after giving birth is 10,000 shillings. Cotton wool is about 80,000 shillings. The mama kits that are supposed to be free, they still sell them to us. When her second born developed a complication necessitating surgery, Namulondo trekked almost 10 kilometers to Chigandalo Health Center 4. This was another harrowing experience. We spent two days at both Health Center 4s and it is quite easy to understand both her pain and frustration of the residents. At Chigandalo, we found Jessica Nachema and her mother had escorted a relative to give birth. Mm. Over the long distance to get here, where the services are supposed to be free, but the midwife angrily backed at us, wanting money. The transport money back home is what we had to give her. Transport. Transport. As soon as we got a bed, a midwife asked that, do you have gloves? We said no. They said go and buy them at the clinic outside. A pair of gloves is 2,000 shillings. But remember each time they are to touch a patient, they need gloves. So I had to buy them in bulk. Then they started asking us to buy more things. At the private clinic just opposite the Chigandalo Health Center 4, patients, expectant mothers and their caretakers were sent to buy almost everything Gloves cost anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 shillings, cotton wool, plastic sheets to the plastic maternity disposal sheets. 
Out of curiosity, we assisted a stranded caretaker of an expectant mother to buy a plastic maternity disposal sheet, which is laid on the hospital beds to absorb blood during maternity and it costs 5,000 shillings. Those who cannot afford such and other required items are left on their own. The proprietor of this private facility, we are told, is a health worker attached to another health center, which is a distance away. At Bwaiso Health Center 3, a few kilometers from here, the condition is both dire and laughable. We pitched camp at the facility for an afternoon, but it remained closed. The residents around, who are now accustomed to this practice, told NTV that health workers here work from 8 a.m. to around noon every day. For extremely emergency cases, one has to go knocking and begging at the staff quarters or find other means. It is not uncommon for government officials to claim that the health system has changed for better, often citing the Uganda Bureau of Statistics findings that 86% of Ugandans live within 5 kilometers of a health facility. But across the 146 districts in the country, the quality of health service leaves a lot to be desired, one that is partly contributory to the failing efforts to curb maternal mortality and morbidity. 73% of our women are delivering from health facilities. Meaning that if you got maternal death happening at, uh, at, uh, at uh, health facilities, then it, it is, it's a clear reflection because majority of the mothers are actually delivering. So uh, only 27 are delivering from communities probably. So but in our record, 73%. That's a good performance, but we would want 100%. would want 100%. Because these complications that lead to death of a mother actually occur in a small group of mothers, around 15% of mothers, so um, get complications and that can potentially lead to death. It, when you see why did child health succeed and why is that not reflected in maternal health and on newborn health, it's primarily due to the nature of the problems the nature of the kill the killing diseases basically in maternal health you don't know at what time labor comes and you can't really schedule an intervention so you have to have a health facility that can provide services 24 hours a day seven days a week That's also accessible to the community within a reasonable distance, depending on where you live. Uh, you don't necessarily measure it by kilometers, although people often do that. Equal kilometers do not necessarily mean equal challenges for the communities to reach uh, the health facility. So that's where the issue is. The Ministry of Health and UBOS are currently working on the periodic demographic and health survey that aptly captures the state of the country's reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health during the last five years. But according to the last demographic and health survey study in 2016, maternal death accounted for 18% of all death among women between the ages of 15 to 49. For every 1,000 women giving birth, at least three died. Dr. Richard Mugahi, the Assistant Commissioner for Reproductive and Infant Health, told NTV that the gains made over a period of time should not be overlooked. In 2011, how many babies were we having in Uganda? Most likely around 600,000. So we have a very huge young population that's productive. So the number of babies have almost doubled over the last 10 years. So this puts a strain on the resources. The health facilities have not changed over the last 10 years. The facilities have not changed. The human resource has not changed. But the number of women coming to deliver has changed. Now, because government facilities have improved and the private facilities are charging very high amounts of money, 80%, 80% of the mothers I've talked about who, who deliver per year, deliver from government facilities. 73 deliver from any health facilities out of the total. 
But 80% of those who deliver from health facilities deliver from public health facilities. Very good indicator. He however admitted that they still face monumental challenges. But the current number of midwives at the health center three is two midwives. I want to use an example of a health center three that delivers minimum 50 mothers. Because some others actually deliver 70, 100. But the one that delivers 50 is moderate. The one that is, is, is around 20, that's the lowest. So, two midwives working because there is a night duty, there is a day duty. And the number of services that are offered. There is antenatal, there is potenatal, there is a, a vaccination, there is a recording, there is delivering itself. So, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the healthcare, this individual called the midwife, is completely stretched. This is a classic example. So when we get more numbers, which we've always been putting before the government and the people allocating money, let's get more numbers. So I think that would go a very long way into addressing the attitude issue. We would reduce attitude, poor attitude of healthcare workers by significant. A Minister of Health is in Tano Matano and Prenatal Death Surveillance and Response Report for the period between January 2021 and the last week of last month, November, details that at least 768 mothers have died in maternity, an average of 16 dead mothers per week or simply two per day. The probable causes of death are obstetric hemorrhage, including postpartum hemorrhage, that is when a woman has heavy bleeding after giving birth ruptured uterus owing to obstructed labor, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, induced abortion, among others. About 33% causes of death were not reviewed. They delay taking a mumbwa, taking you with drugs, then come to the hospital when it's late. They delay at the TBA, Banabazali Sabo Machado, eh? TBA, come to the hospital when it's dead. You read that report. Most of them are delays, delays, delays. By the time they reach a the facility, they have delayed enough. The mother is probably also gasping and the baby has already died. These are things that we are fighting with. These are things that we are fighting with. But there's also a delay at the facility. If you reach a facility and they say go and buy goes, there is no suture, the doctor has gone somewhere, then there's also another delay there. Peter Echeru, the program specialist for health and human rights advocacy at the NGO Center for Health, Human Rights and Development says there is more lip service than pragmatism towards the crisis. A lot of times we've spent money on capital investments in, in maternal health. But in terms of the real deliverables that will require us to reduce uh, maternal death in this country, we still have challenges. And that's why the reports from Ministry of Health will indicate that and the indicator that relates to the number of uh, women who die in health facilities. And that is because resourcing for other issues that improve maternal health have not yet been factored. Uh, have not been taken into consideration. And so we believe that it is important still to allocate more resources to ensure that we have professionals that we need. He said the health service providers are usually not held accountable. A lot of people who are supposed to exercise oversight, who are supposed to do allocation of resources to health, do not actually go to these health facilities because they have health insurance. So they have the cards and they're able to go to private facilities. So they never get to know the magnitude of their problem in these public uh, health facilities. So it is important that they listen more to people who utilize these health service uh, systems and address their concerns. When we say that there are no drugs, it is important that someone gets to listen. But until the last DHS survey in 2016, the country lost about 14 women while giving birth each day, which attracted a lot of interventions, both by the government and the donors who bankroll a sizable part of Uganda's health budget. Atnaf Gatachu, an obstetrician gynecologist and a health manager at the UN Children Emergency Fund told NTV that community empowerment to step up and demand for better results is among the key missing links to the current crisis. The service providers not just as individuals, but as a system, need to be evaluated in by their responsiveness to, to the community need. That, that's where I see we, we can still make progress with what we have. 
I'm, I'm not saying that we don't need more resources. We do. We definitely need more health workers. We definitely need to to make what the the ones we have more competent. But whatever you do, until you make the service providers accountable, you, you won't be able to achieve all what you need. He said throwing money at the problem, as is the norm, doesn't necessarily yield results. A health system, a health, health facilities, health delivery service delivery platforms that are functional and providing good quality of care every day. That's where we are not uh, able to make it so far. It has to do with human resources. One point you mentioned was human resources. The issues we have with human resources includes the number, competency, basically skills, attitudes. None of these things are easy to change. Uh, they require investment, they require commitment as a society, as, uh, as a country or as a global community and also uh, persistent effort. We also took some time in the deeper resource of Metiana district, but the situation did not differ much from Mayuge. At Manyi Health Center 3, expectant mothers had to part with money to buy items used in delivery. At Kabule Health Center 3, health workers were apathetic towards their duties. Some spent time on their phones, ostensibly on social media, and others chatting away. To be adequately assisted during childbirth, a few women we talked to said one has to part with up to 100,000 shillings to be assisted. At Tanda Health Center 3, electricity has been disconnected for many months now, so health workers work until early evening and retire at dusk. All patients with emergency cases are referred to better facilities. Look at the, minister, uh, the annual performance report for Ministry of Health for 2020-2021. It clearly indicates that up to 31 health facilities, health centre fours, could not actually do, uh, maternal, did not provide caesarean services. Largely one, because they did not have the human resource. The other one was because they did not have blood in their facilities. And yet in Uganda, of women who die of maternal death that we have in this country, 42 or 43 percent of them are caused by hemorrhage. What hemorrhage requires is that we need to be able to quickly provide blood. So, um, government has embarked on building health center threes in every sub -county. You could have seen some of them, the new ones. Uh, we've in the last two years plus, we've built over 300 over 300 health centers, there is very modern facilities. We are going to equip them, we are going to purchase equipment, it's coming in January, uh, equipment for, for these ones. We've also gotten money, government has committed money to pay for the health workers who are going to operationalize these health center three. So, the attitude, we are still, we are aware by the way, we are very aware that uh, some of our health workers have very good attitude. Some have moderate attitude, others have bad attitude. I'm not saying nurses or what, but all health workers. Some are even doctors with bad attitude. But there are some who are exceptionally good and doing a tremendous job. Some health center we were with the minister in Kasese. A health center three delivers 215 per month. That's an abnormal number. And this has an implication also on the attitude because when uh, someone is tired, we, we don't say attitude is because people are tired, but sometimes that continuous stress, your energies are used up and, and you're, you're working so hard. and So sometimes that could be explained the attitude of the health workers. Inside many delivery rooms, the situation was, to say the least, frightening, congested, or dilapidated. At Oli Health Center 4 in Arua, Mothers could be seen milling around as health workers 
weren't by their business, a common problem across nearly all health facilities. Expectant mothers here complained of the same problem, especially to be charged for some services that are supposed to be free as elsewhere. When you go to the health center for delivery, they ask for 10,000 shillings to buy detergents such as Jik or Omo. Other times, especially the first months, they are usually very rude. Then there are some small money, they ask for this and that, that one has to part with. The in charge of the facility gave mixed reactions when confronted. So that issue of paying 1,000 for the cuts and 10,000 for delivery is not there, according to what I see. But maybe in the case it happened, it is on individual basis. Dr. Mugai admitted that attitude remains a problem, but which can only be addressed with hiring more health workers to reduce the workload. With a public health system already overburdened and chronically underfunded, matters are made worse by the country's high fertility rates. There is also the perennial shortage of drugs as a result of hoarding and theft by health workers. But Echeri said part of the problem is the planners, especially at the Ministry of Health, who seldom use the same public health system. It does not necessarily have to be money. And I'll give you an example. Uh, the Auditor General did uh, an audit on uh, a World Bank project where World Bank had supported the country to procure equipment. We just threw in money to procure equipments. But what the Auditor General later on found out was that in a lot of health facilities they went to, this, this equipment that were bought were actually being stored and had never served the purpose. They were either in stores or they did not have manpower to manage them or they had broken down and there was no money to repair them. With assistance of development partners, there have been numerous interventions to the crisis, such as results-based financing for primary health care service and the Uganda Reproductive Matanu and Child Health Services Improvement Project, where health centers receive a financial incentive for the number of mothers delivering in health centers as opposed to stay home or with traditional bath attendants. The Uganda Reproductive Matanu and Child Health Services Improvement Project was rolled out in 2017, running until 2022, but documents seen by NTV show, despite the billions of shillings allocated to the project, the overall performance was fair, with only 63.1% of the set targets achieved. Notably, there were delays in disbursements of funds for facilities and a results-based financing for primary health care service. Some facilities received only two reimbursements, quarter one and two, while others did not get quarter two disbursements. Several health centers that were supposed to be constructed were yet to kick off. How do we exactly deliver services? I mean, the, the power balance between a service provider and the client is perhaps one missing link we can talk about. Uh, often the service provider appears to have more power than the client. This is something where uh, we may all need to focus to reverse. Our data is showing that there is a reduction from 336. So probably we are losing like five mothers a day from what we used to think of uh, of a minibus, now we are losing five mothers a day. Still a big number, still a big number, not very comforting. So we know, first of all, we know what is killing our mothers. We know. We know where they are dying from. Uh, we know what can be done. Now, the, the missing links are the pieces of, of how, how do we get what can be done done. Uganda has made significant progress in reducing the number of mothers who die from complications during labor and after childbirth in the last 15 years. The lingering question is whether this component of the health sector can change for better while the rest of the health sector remains dysfunctional.